a special vlog video um and we have a couple of topics we're going to talk about um and before we do any video games i kind of wanted to get this this stream out of the way because it was some interesting things that i wanted to talk about uh first in involving dragon ball sparkling zero uh secondly the nintendo uh contacts the creator of ryujinx the other nintendo switch emulator um uh, was shut down i got some interesting uh takes on that as well as talking about the whole p diddy nonsense and that's going to be a very introspective topic when i talk on that so uh, when i speak on that so forgive me if you're watching this live on stream um i can't uh have any background music playing you know live uh because tiktok unfortunately they have it in for me like when i i can upload anything and they'll just try to find some excuse to give me a community guidelines violation i mean when i first made this channel from my last account getting banned for nothing and they still can't explain why they banned that i uploaded a pokemon unite highlight video and they called it they, they flagged it for sexual content now i did get the video back and i got the the violation you know uh taken off the account but it's like they were just waiting on something for just to, it's, it's almost like they're just looking for anything to try to get me in trouble so i'm being careful with the background music live i'm being careful with you know showing certain things in uh in chrome or in the web browser that i use uh and I'm, I, I got to be careful with what I say on TikTok, even something that that isn't an issue at all. TikTok, I find a reason to try to, you know, so I'm just being very, very careful. So first thing I want to talk about is Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. Now, let me get this picture up. I should have did this earlier. I do apologize, but let's just get this up. Um, so I got an interesting take. Where is that picture at? Did I, I don't think I put it in here. <clears throat> I honestly should have better prepared for this. This is poor scholarship. I admit it. Um, bro, I had the picture in here and I'm trying to think where. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay. So this is the roster for Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. And this is, I don't know how well you guys can see that. But this is all the characters in there. Now, of course, they said this is like 186 characters in the game. And I'm looking forward to playing it. But there's some things people have to understand about Sparkling Zero. This is basically Budokai Tenkaichi 4. It's basically the fourth, the fourth game in the Budokai Tenkaichi series. So it's kind of skipping over what Rage and Blast was for the most part. Um, I don't... I mean, obviously, I never had my hands on the game yet. It's coming out uh next week uh i think early releases in like three days or, or early access is in three days for, for the people that pre-ordered it um and i think the official release date is on the 10th but uh they made a video not too long ago and i'm not gonna play it you know you guys can look it up um where they mentioned uh how they plan to stifle people just shooting straight for the final forms on the character selection screen. Now, if you look on here carefully, you can see that they they kind of counted every form as its own character because you can choose to play the game or play the match starting off as that final form. However, in order to alleviate people from doing that, because you know people are just going to do that anyway, right? They have um, a system in place where if you start off from the the original form or the first form and you transform as the match goes on, you get more health. So there's a benefit to you actually, you know, starting off in the first form instead of people just going there and just, you know, getting the final form. And that's all you're going to see. Uh, secondly, one thing people have to understand is, is that this is not a fighting game by any means and, and i've spoken on this many times before there's a difference between fighting games and anime arena fighters right it's two completely different things you know one is an experience that's for the most part is balanced and it tries to give every character a fair chance 
to it's more so based on skill right with anime arena fighters they're more so trying to follow the lore of the anime that it's based on so there's going to be a lot of overpowered nonsense in this game and that's kind of like the charm of it considering that you know from what i can remember budokai tenkaichi was the first official anime arena fighter technically it wasn't but technically it was what i mean by that is when anime arena fighters got started or when that term or that genre became popular that's when the naruto series started so technically technically naruto i want to say officially Nar the naruto ninja storm games was the first anime arena fighter but historically budokai tenkaichi was the first anime arena fighter but even if you look it up right now they, they kind of classify it as a fighting game so you know anime arena fighters wasn't a thing back then but uh but technically it, it was the first one um it, but it's always been like an, an imbalanced mess because the whole premise of the game was to fight just like the dragon ball z characters and be just as overpowered and ridiculous as the Dragon Ball Z characters in the movies, in the series, and in any TV specials that they had. And it looks like they're going to carry that on. I'm hoping that they balance it out to where it, that, it's not going to be that much of a mess. Because if they're doing lore accuracy, we, we know that, you know, Janemba, Super Gogeta, Vegito, uh... Of course, Broly from Dragon Ball Z. Um, all these characters are just going to overpower the game. And it's going to become a boring mess. And it's going to fizzle out kind of quick. Like it's going to be a flash in a pan. And I, I would like to think that they're avoiding that as much as possible. That's my only concern about Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. I know it's going to be a overpowered mess. I'm hoping that they also have something in place to where... Like with the Naruto games, right? Like with the Naruto Ninja Storm, uh, that line of games. When you want, you you can't really have a tournament with a game like that. And I know some people was talking about tournaments with this. I know they're going to try, but ultimately they're going to fail <laughs> with the tournaments unless they go back and like do patches to like balance the game out better. Um, a tournament with a game like this is just pretty much impossible. And... When you have a system that allows people to just, you know, knock you down, go go away, like fly off, power up, you know, saying charge their energy just so they can spam blasts and whatever like that, even though in a sense that's that's kind of what Dragon Ball Z is. That's kind of what Dragon Ball has been ever since the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. Um it doesn't make for a good game. And after a while, people get tired of that. And that's what Ninja Storm was. Even though it, it had a, a fun element to it, you know, oftentimes people would just, they would just spam. They would just knock people down and just, you know, charge their chakra and then just spam a bunch of super moves or try to spam an ultimate or, you know what I'm saying? And when you make a game that, that one dimensional, it makes it boring. That's the reason why Jump Force didn't last as long as it did. On top of the fact that people were just spamming with Yugi and Kaiba and, you know what I'm saying, just being cheap and cheesy as hell. It's like you can't have a tournament game with when, when, when the game that you're promoting has elements in it like that, you know, or has factors in it that, that ruin the, the, the desire to want to play it. So I'm hoping... That with all that being said, they avoid that with this. Because you know, Ultra Instinct, like, I would say a good 30% of this roster is Goku versions. Uh, you know, variations of Goku. So, and Vegeta. So, we already know we're going to see the exact same characters being used nonstop. It's going to be born for the most part. Early on, it's going to be the same stuff. But I would like to think that, you know, as the game goes on... <laughs> People will like to, you know, branch out and try different characters to where we don't see the exact same thing over and over again because you know what's going to happen. Um, as far as my intentions with the game, I've, I kind of already counted Vegeta and like Goku out of the, the characters that I want to use because I'm already bored with them before the game even comes out because you know how people come on. It, it, it's obvious. I mean, it's Dragon Ball. 
right? P- people love Goku. They love Vegeta. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that type of... How can I put it? That type of glazing, I guess they call it. I don't know why I did quotes, but, you know, of those characters, it makes you not want to play them. And people who play fighting games for real know what I'm talking about. Even the anime arena fighters. Just any game that has a competitive uh, nature or like a combat nature to it. When you see the same character over and over again, it makes you not want to play that character because you've seen him too much. And there's too many characters on this roster for us to be playing the same thing or going up against the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to be looking for characters that I don't see being used that often. I know they didn't put uh, the Spice Boys in here. I don't see the Spice Boys. I see Garlic Jr. I don't see the Spice Boys. I don't see Hatchiak from the movie Plan to Eradicate the Sands. I don't see that. I don't see him, or unless that's him in the corner right there. Um, is that him in the corner? No, that's, that's Super Android uh, 13. I don't see Hellraiser 17 in here. I don't see Super 17 from... Uh, from uh, Dragon Ball GT, unless I'm just skipping over them. Yeah, like, it's some characters that they could probably do some DLC for, and I'm hoping that they, they do bring those, because they, they have been in previous... Oh, I, I don't even see the other Shadow Dragons. I just see Sin Shinron and Omega Shinron. Because um, Nova Shinron was, like, one of the bigger characters during the GT arc, well, well during, uh, during the Shadow Dragon arc. So I'm hoping that we at least see him in the game. Um, but outside of that, I mean, that's just my thoughts on Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. Like I said, I'm glad they put a, a, a feature in it or a system in place to try to stop people from just going straight to like the final forms only and kind of gives an incentive to the people that that began the fight with the character in their uh, with the character in their base form. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad they gave an incentive for that. So you get more health if you start off in the base form and then you transform along the way, but you only, you know, get like a, a small, you know, slidget of health, if anything, uh, if you begin in the final form. So that's all that is for, uh, with Sparkling Zero.